Vani Pricharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're recounting the pastimes of Gop Kumar, who is a cowherd boy from Govardhan, as they're narrated in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> So, Gop Kumar, by the power of a mantra, was able to travel into the spiritual world and he went to Vaikuntha. And from Vaikuntha, he went to a special region of Vaikuntha, Dwarka. So in Dwarka, he met with, after meet, first of all, he met with the Lord of Dwarka, the Lord Dwarkadish, and then he met with Uddhava, who resides there in Dwarka, and he was in the home of Uddhava, and he met Narada Muni. Narada Muni came there. And Narada Muni narrated to him all the glories of Gokul and told him also about Goloka. Goku means on the earthly planet, where place of Vrindavan is, and Goloka is in the spiritual world. There's a special planet above Vaikuntha, Goloka, where all the pure devotees in the mood of Vrindavan reside. But Narada Muni was telling him that he could also go to Jagannath Puri. There's a place in the spiritual sky, some distance from Dwarka, which is the place of Lord Jagannath. And he thought it would be good for Gop Kumar to go there. But Uddhava didn't quite agree. Uddhava thought that, well, they said that, that the Lord of Jagannath Puri, Lord Jagannath, is not different from the Lord here in Dwarka. It's the same, they're the same person. So it didn't make much sense to Uddhava that Gop Kumar should go there to Puri. Uh, he thought that if you go there to Puri, you'll see the pastimes of the Lord there, and then you will feel some pain 
from seeing these pastimes of Lord Krishna. Yeah, in Jagannath Puri, they do plays about Krishna's pastimes in Goku, and when Gopkumar hears these pastimes, he'll feel pain in the heart that he's not able to actually see go to see Lord Krishna there in in, in this Goku in these pastimes. He said, of course, I mean, no, if you go to Jagannath Puri, you get a lot of Mahaprasadam, you can enjoy Lord Jagannath's Prasadam, and you can also enjoy the festivals and the different processions which they have. So you'll feel some bliss there with all of these activities, but one thing which is not very good is you won't feel the humility which is so necessary to go to Goloka. Because if he goes to Puri, he'll be so, he'll be enjoying so much all the things, that, the prasadam and the, all the, the processions, and, but he won't develop the real quality to go to Goloka, which is Krishna Prem. Yeah, in order to develop this Krishna Prem, this really deep love for Krishna, you have to have very, very deep humility and that qualifies you to be able to get into Goloka. And Uddhava says also, he said, the Lord Purushottam, Lord Purushottam means Lord Jagannath. He said he, he, he feels sympathy for the distress of others. So he will send you from Jagannath Puri to Goku. Lord Jagannath doesn't like to see his devotees suffer and he knows Gop Kumar will be suffering without seeing Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. So Lord Jagannath will tell Gop Kumar that you should go to Goku. You should go there to Goku. Go to go there to Goku in, on the Earth planet, just beside Mathura. You just go there directly. So so, Buddha said, why not just go there directly? You, you know, you don't wait for. Don't go to Jagannath Puri and Lord Jagannath tells you to go to Goku. You just go directly yourself to Goku. 
个男的就会把胳膊扣满，送呃把他派遣到狗窟了，嗯，就会让他居住在直接居住在地球上的嗯马祖热区域。乌德瓦的意思就是说，你为什么不直接去马祖热呢？嗯，还要等到主扎班纳的告诉你，嗯，再去呢，你自己直接去就好了。In Goku, the devotees are always humble, and they feel that real love for Krishna. Goku's when the devotees who are in Vrindavan, they they are always feeling that they're always. Lamenting, their hearts burning, they're searching for Krishna. They're always in that mood. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? When they see the rivers and the forests and the mountain, they're they're, they're just thinking, where is Krishna? Krishna 在哪儿 ？Krishna 在哪儿？他们看见河流、森林、山脉，他们就会向他们询问 Krishna 在哪里。Because all the, all of these places in Vrindavan, they're all connected with the different pastimes of Lord Krishna. And when you see Govardhan, when you see the Yamuna River, when you see the forests of Vrindavan, you just remember all of Krishna's pastimes. Vrindavan 的这些地方。So this the mood of Gokula helps devotee to develop the real love for Krishna and that humility necessary to get love of Krishna. So and when when they're in Vrindavan, they're always searching. Where is Krishna? When will he come? Where will we find him? So when you develop, when the devotee develops that pure love in Gokula, then they become qualified to go to Goloka. So the the mood is that Gop Kumar should go first to go Gokula, and then from Gokula he can also go to Goloka. Um, so his meaning is that Gop Kumar, he, um, um, actually he should go to Gokula, and then from Gokula he can go to Goloka. So this was the instructions from Uddhava. And it agreed with Narada Muni. Agreed with them, and he was very happy. They were both happy. This is Uddhava's instruction. Narada Muni also agreed with this. They were both happy. 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 They were both With what Uddhava was saying. Narada Muni hadn't been able to say everything which Uddhava said. Narada Muni, he, um, 还没有来得及说出 Uddhava 要说的呃说的这这一番话。So Narada Muni turns to Uddhava and he says, "You're really the 
you really, you really have great love for the people of Vrindavan. And everything you've said, Narada Muni says to Uddhava, he said, everything you've said to this boy, Gopkumar, will help him to achieve what he wants, what is good for him. Narada, Narada Muni is saying that the best place to advance for Gopkumar is to go to Vrindavan. He can't make the same advancement if he goes to Jagannath Puri. Yeah, if he goes to Jagannath Puri, he can get the same result, but it will take much longer. Yeah, so Narada Muni says to Uddhava, you know the, the real glory of Vrindavan. You, you left Krishna when he was in Dwarka to go there to Vrindavan and you stayed there in Vrindavan for a long time. So like this Narada Muni is saying that Narada Muni is saying that Uddhava knew, he knew about Goloka because he stayed there. Narada Muni never did, he never actually stayed in Vrindavan. Yeah, Narada Muni, he, he did, didn't know all the special glories about Gokula, as well as Uddhava knows everything. So Narada Muni looks around and he sees auspicious signs and he began to speak to Gokumar. Yeah, he looked around and he saw the birds all chirping and nice auspicious omens everywhere. So he wanted to give the best advice for Gopkumar. And he And he tells Gopkumar, he said that very soon you're going to achieve your purpose, you're going to get what you really want. And Narada Muni says, a long time ago, I, I, I knew that this was going to happen to you. Narada Muni says, when you first came to, when you first came to Vaikuntha, then, and then you went to Ayodhya, and then you went to Dwarka. So, this place is even greater than all these places. When you went to the heavenly planets and the other planets in the material world, you, 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 
you remain, it was like you didn't know anything, but even though you were seeing the lotus feet of the Lord, it didn't mean very much to you. Yeah, like when Gopkumar went to Vaikuntha and Ayodhya and Dwarka, he was not so satisfied. It, it, it was not so pleasing or so fulfilling. It didn't meet, give him what he was looking for. Even when he was in the material world and he was going to the higher planets, some places he would get the personal association of Lord Vishnu, but it, he was not, he, he didn't fully appreciate it. Even though he didn't know about higher planets then, he didn't know about higher planets, but still he, he just didn't feel the, the deep satisfaction of being with the Supreme Lord. Because Gop Kumar wants the highest happiness, the highest spiritual happiness, and that highest spiritual happiness is only achievable in Goloka, in Goku. So Narada Muni says that I think all of these things happened just to increase your love for Lord Krishna. Because there's no other reason why you should feel any distress in this place, in this Vaikuntha. And how is it possible that you could be ignorant while you're in these kind of places, these places which are so exalted? There's, there's, there shouldn't be any ignorance, but you didn't have, but you, it seems like you had, you were in ignorance about the spiritual world. So Gop Kumar is a devotee of Madan Gopala and he always wants to see Gop Kumar. He always wants to see Madan Gopal. His his heart is fixed on Gop on Madan Gopal. So there's no real there's no no real purpose behind the the sorrow to to feel sorrow in the spiritual world is not normal that you can you can explain why somebody why Gop Kumar would feel this sorrow
And then, he, and then when he was in the higher planets in the material world, he was always like he was ignorant about any other place, higher. So there was no reason to understand how he could be there and at the same time be ignorant about other places. So this allowed Gop to, Gop Kumar to feel the special ecstasy of discovering Lord Krishna on every planet. Yeah, because he would become curious about what's there, what's on this planet, and he would go to that planet, and he would go to that place, and he would get, he would experience ecstasy, learning about the Lord there. Mm. Just like Gop Kumar, earlier in the beginning of his travels, he went to the higher planets above, above the heavenly planets. He went to places like Maharloka and Janaloka, Tapaloka. So Gop Kumar, because of his simplicity, because of his simple mood, not knowing very much, it allowed him to see Lord Krishna and the, allowed him to see the Supreme Lord with a very pure, in a very pure way. Yeah, if the if a person has a lot of knowledge in his mind, then he he can be easily critical. And he can and he can be agitated by different thoughts. He's, he he cannot he, he cannot enjoy the 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 mood of a simple person. So, because Gop Kumar, he's just a cowherd boy from Govardhan, so he's simple, he's not, he doesn't have a lot of education, and that, but that gives him the opportunity to discover more about the Supreme Lord. And because of his simplicity, he's able to, to he's able to feel love and affection for the Lord in all of these different places. But of course, Gop Kumar has a special attraction for Madan Gopal, for the, the Lord's pastimes in Goloka. So Narada Muni tell uh, Narada Muni says to Uddhava that you should go now, go quickly to Vrindavan, to the land of Vrindavan, and uh, go to the earth and enjoy Vrindavan, and there you will fulfil your desires which you have had for so long. 
，然后呢，木里就告诉我，嗯，我画空儿，嗯，你赶紧现在就动身去吧，你现在就去稳当了，你去去那个地方，这样你就满满足了你的心愿了。嗯。In Go in Vrindavan, Gop Kumar will see the lotus feet of Madan Gopal. Vrindavan gives reput makes the earth famous for its beauty and gives it a reputation. Vrindavan gives the earth famous for its beauty. Yes, this is des described by the gopis. They say that Vrindavan spreads the glories of the planet Earth. Because Vrindavan is blessed with the lotus feet of Lord Krishna walking all over it. And when Lord Krishna plays his flute, then all the peacocks dance mad. And all the all the other creatures from the tops of the mountains, when they see the peacocks all dancing mad, they all become stunned. So without delay, you will succeed. You you will succeed in your spiritual practice. It will bring you. It will bring you ultimately to Goloka, which is even above Vaikuntha. So, um, how how long? 嗯，这就能给你带来生命的成功，能够使你去到 Gokula Goloka。So when Narada Muni spoke like this, then Gop Kumar was eager to go to Vrindavan, but Uddhava could understand that his heart was anxious that he should. Uddhava could understand Gop Kumar's mind that Gop Kumar was thinking he should get permission from the Lord. 嗯，这个这个，嗯，马祖的多尔卡之城的主人的允许。Right, the Lord of Dwarka, Dwarkanath, Lord Krishna in Dwarka is called Dwarkanath. So, Gop Kumar thought that before he leaves there, that he should get the permission from Lord Dwarkanath. So, Uddhava said, has something to say to Gop Kumar. 在多尔卡的主人叫多尔卡纳特，嗯，现在乌德，嗯，格帕库马尔他要离开那里的话，他希望能得到多尔卡纳特的允许，所以乌德瓦呢，他就有话要对他说了。So Uddhava tells Gop Kumar, he said, if you were going anywhere else, then it would be proper to take permission from the Lord of Dwarka. 如果你想去别的地方，那首先得到多尔卡的主人的允许，这这个是比较正确的方式。But you're going to Vrindavan, you're going to Gokul, and that place is very, very. That's the most dear place to the Lord of Dwarka. So he favors that place even more than the place he lives in, than than in Dwarka. 
So, by if you do service for the Lord here in Dwarka, that love which you get from service will develop more in the land of Vrindavan. Yeah, you develop much more love in the land of Vrindavan than you can develop here in Dwarka. So Uddhava says, I spent a long time in Vrindavan and I, 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 I would say that I was staying there to give comfort to the Lord's devotees. Because these devotees were feeling so much separation from Krishna, it was like there was nothing left in their life. So I was pretending to stay there to, to comfort them and to encourage them. But actually the reason why Uddhava stayed in Vrindavan was not for the benefit of them, but it was for his own benefit. Because he went to Vrindavan to learn from them how to love Krishna. Mm. So it, it appears like Uddhava was, was giving comfort to the cowherd men and women. But actually, you know, they're so much more advanced and Uddhava is learning from them. So Uddhava tells Gop Kumar, I am sure that Lord Dwarkadish, he knows about your desire that you want to see Madame Gopal in Vrindavan. And he, Lord Dwarkadish, he will arrange to bring you to his topmost abode. He will arrange to bring you to Goloka. So Gop Kumar may agree that, okay, I don't need to ask for the Lord's permission, but still he, he may simply think, I, I, want, I want to have his darshan before I leave. I should, I should see him just more, one more time before I leave. But Uddhava tells Gop Kumar, he said, Krishna is going to go with you on your journey. He said, Vrindavan is very dear to Krishna. And so Krishna himself will take you to Vrindavan. Uddhava tells Gop Kumar, 
So Gopkumar, hearing all these words from Uddhava, he was in ecstasy and he almost he seemed to lose his consciousness. He didn't actually faint, but he lost his, he couldn't see things, he couldn't see no, external, he couldn't see, for, for a moment he couldn't see because he closed his eyes. So he was there in Dwarka and when he closed his eyes, he, 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 he wasn't aware exactly where he was or what was happening. And then he could understand, Gop Kumar could understand someone had taken him to another place. And when he opened his eyes, he saw that he was in this, in this forest. Yeah, because he closed his eyes, he couldn't see who was carrying him, couldn't see what was happening. But actually Krishna was taking him to earth to put him in Gokula. If he had actually seen Krishna, then he wouldn't be able to leave him. But he wants to go to Goloka, so he, Krishna arranges that he doesn't actually see Krishna. And Urnava also didn't want Gop Kumar to see Krishna before he left Dwarka. Because he knows if Gop Kumar will see Krishna again in Dwarka, he won't want to leave Dwarka and he'll never go to Goku, he'll never go to Vrindavan. And so Krishna, uh, Krishna arranged like this so that Gokumar could actually get to Vrindavan and he could go on to go to Goloka. So in this way, Gop Kumar finds himself in Vrindavan and he is able to go and see many places of Krishna's pastimes. And he would go up to the different places, he would sing about Krishna's pastimes and he would could focus his mind upon all of Krishna's pastimes. And Gop Kumar said, I became so ecstatic, I became so emotional, he said, I'm even embarrassed to try to tell you about it. Mm. 
So Gopkumar got this good fortune by following the instructions of Narada Muni. And by the, this mercy of Narada Muni, he will also be able to go to Goloka. So while visiting Vrindavan, Gopkumar is able to see with his own eyes, he's able to see Krishna with his different cowherd friends and performing the cowherd pastimes. And seeing Krishna and seeing Krishna's pastimes, Gopkumar feels the highest ecstasy, he becomes like almost like a madman. And days and nights he would be in great distress, he'd be crying and not, not he, he, he was just crying and, and so much uh, longing to be with Krishna. He didn't know that the, the practice, the, the different things which he'd been doing, if they were going to give him happiness or if they were going to give him sorrow. So Gok Kumar had begun his spiritual practice the day he left home as a young boy. So it seems like his spiritual practice is coming to perfection, but he doesn't know if the final result will actually bring happiness. And this doubt has been with Gopkumar for a long time, and it will it will stay with him for some more time. He won't know, uh, he won't know if he's going to get happiness or sorrow. Yeah, when he's in sorrow, he feels like he's living in the flames of a forest fire. And the happiness is like being in, is like the nectar of the cool water of the Yamuna. And sometimes Gop Kumar would think that, you know, so I'm, I, I'm being cheated, Some, that I'm in the hands of a great cheater. This personality is cheating me. It's like being in an ocean of suffering. There's no happy, not, not a drop of happiness. And, and that's why Gop Kumar was living there in the forests of Vrindavan. And one day, when he was weeping, he felt he was in that feeling that sorrow, he was crying, he fell unconscious. And 
So in his unconscious state, the Lord appeared to him, and with his he put his lotus hand on put his lotus hand uh, well with his lotus hand he was holding his flute and he, he used his hand to wipe the dust from the body of Gokumar. So the Lord is there, must, he was uh, taking the dust from the body of Gokumar and bringing Gokumar back to consciousness. And Gokumar could smell this very special aroma, special fragrance which was coming from the body of the Lord. Gokumar had never smelled this fragrance before. So Lord Madan Gopal had appeared to Gopkumar to give him the highest perfection. And although Gopkumar was unconscious, he, his, he, he could smell, and that sense of smell, smell of Krishna, was so special, it awakened Gopkumar. So Gop Kumar, he, he, he describes Krishna as the best of cheats. But actually he thinks of Krishna, he thinks of Krishna as the best of one who knows everything, the best of everything. And Gokumar is thinking that just now Krishna is wiping my body with his own hands. But any moment he may leave me and I won't be able to see him. So Gokumar saw Krishna, he stood up and he was so happy, he tried to catch hold of Krishna, to ca catch hold of Krishna's cloth. But Krishna tricked him, Krishna escaped from him, and he, <laughs> he, Kumar couldn't catch him, Krishna was playing his flute, and at the same time, he was careful that Gopkumar couldn't grab him. And then Krishna disappeared. Because they were in the forest, there were many trees, and Krishna just disappeared from Gopkumar's vision. And when Gopkumar couldn't see him, then he fainted again. And when he fell down, he fell into the Yamuna, and the Yamuna River carried him away. 
So Gop Kumar uh, his fainting was not it wasn't a material thing. It was ecstasy. So the, the consciousness when 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 he got back his consciousness because he, he was still bewildered by the the love of Krishna. So he he didn't actually know what was happening. And he saw himself being moved to another place it's a, along a wonderful path and there was a vehicle flying faster than the mind and higher than one could imagine. Gop Kumar, he couldn't identify what the vehicle was. It, the vehicle was taking him, was carrying him away. He, he, he couldn't understand what it was. He could only say it was moving upwards at a faster, faster than the mind. And the path which it took was also just amazing. It was something which he'd never ever seen before. So Gop Kumar, he gradually got control, got control over his mind and he was amazed to see that he was passing through Vaikuntha Loka and going beyond Vaikuntha Loka. And Gop Kumar remembered he'd visited Lord Narayan when he was there in Vaikuntha. And then from Vaikuntha, then they went on to Ayodhya and then to Dwarka. So they were passing over all these places very quickly. And then Gop Kumar saw himself arriving at Goloka, the place where he had longed to go for a long time. Everything appeared the same, just as in Vrindavan when he was on earth. So Goloka is where Lord Krishna eternally enjoys his pastimes. But Gop, Gop Kumar, he doesn't have the vision to understand all of this properly. So, Goloka is, appears just like the Gokul on earth. The, so, why does Goloka It's, 
it's difficult to understand why Goloka and Goku are a little different, some subtle differences. That, yeah, in, 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 but in Goloka, just like in Goku, Lord Krishna doesn't want the reverence which is given in other places. He doesn't want to be worshipped and given respect. He just wants the the love, the pure love which is there in Goloka. So we'll stop here. We'll hear about how Gop Kumar, what happens to him now he's in Goloka next week. And we'll hear how he takes part in Krishna's pastimes. Okay. So I'll ask if there are any questions today? Mm, yes. Uh, the first question is from Obeisance to Guru and all the devotees in the group. The traditional Chinese New Year festival is coming. How can I deal with my family members, eat beef and drink liquor at home? Yes, very difficult. Very inauspicious atmosphere. Anyway, you you have to be tolerant somehow. You have to put up with the things. Be thankful that it's not for very long. For one or two days, these things go on. This year, of course, the China government are not encouraging people to go home. They prefer that you just stay and work. They don't like everyone traveling because of the danger of the virus. So maybe you can avoid <laughs> some of these association. You know, we're encouraged not to not to have groups, big groups of people. It's not safe. There's very easy risk of becoming infected by the virus. So you can make some excuses to avoid being with many people. Because the 
常安全。如果聚会呢，就容易染上病毒。所以你可以找理由来避免这些聚会、聚餐。And nowadays, because of things like this virus, more people are serious about vegetarianism. They understand that vegetarian diet is much more healthier than eating meat. You just have to learn how to cook nice. You have to be able to cook very tasty, satisfying food. The people are ignorant. They don't understand how to prepare nice vegetarian dishes. They think vegetarian means you just eat rice and some green leaf. So you try to cook nicely, prepare nice foodstuffs, and then try to attract them to eat some nice prasada. Radhacharan Prabhu has been teaching people how to cook, so you should learn from him all of his classes. Learn how to make cheese, and when you make cheese, then you fry it, and people think, oh, it's, it's like some kind of meat. Prabhupada taught us how to do all these things. You should also learn. Okay, any other question? Krishna. Because this question is asked. Oh, okay, okay. Jishu, shall I give one to you? Tulasi Gopinath Devadasi. 请问顾入不是不是我说你入牌那个就你你直接问就行那个问题我没有发上来的哦 自己永远无法退回到吃喝玩乐的物质生活呢？另一方面，我现在还无法像奉献进步的奉献者，全身心投入到放爱服，所以感到孤独矛盾。嗯，请问咕噜，我是不是夜里显现被夹我？嗯。
捆绑的太太深，请孤仁慈指导我从这种迷惑中解脱出来吧，顶拜孤荣。Obeisance to Guru and all teachers. Oh, uh, today the questions uh, raised by another new faculty. Uh, why my mind is always wandering between material life and spiritual study. On the one hand, I know that uh, I can never return back to the material life of eating, drinking, and mar marrying. But on the other hand. Now I'm not so advanced as those devoted to put all my heart in the devotional service. Therefore, I feel lonely and um, contradictory in my heart. So uh, I want to ask a Guru, is that my karma? Is this, is this due to my karma? I'm bound deeply by a false ego. So please. Um, be merciful to me to guide me and uh, deliver me from this bewilderment of to Guru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're still trying to decide if you want to be a devotee or not. It sounds like you haven't fully committed yourself to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's common when we first come to Krishna consciousness, we're thinking, I'm not sure, have I made the right decision? Should I go into this or should I not? Maybe I shouldn't commit myself. So you have to you have to deal with your own mind. You have to study this Krishna consciousness and examine the the process and consider how much are you going to benefit by being a devotee and how much are you going to lose if you don't be a devotee how what what's going to happen if you become a devotee or not are you going to get a lot from the material world <laughs> You have to decide, do you want to be with the devotees or you want to be with the non-devotees? You want to be with all these karmis, the meat eaters and the, uh, the, all these people who have all the bad habits. So if you decide to be with the non-devotees, then you're, that's your karma. You're under your, you will suffer and enjoy according to your karma. But if you commit yourself to Krishna consciousness, then you come under the control of Krishna and you get this mercy of Krishna. So you have to decide, do you want the mercy, do you want, are you, do you want to trust Krishna's mercy or do you want to trust your own karma? Mm -hmm. 
您是信任 Krishna 的仁慈呢，还是信信任您自己的 karma 业报？ See what your karma has in store for you. So you have to be convinced of a better life in Krishna consciousness. You have to really believe that the material world doesn't have much to offer you. Then only you can convince yourself to fully, to properly engage in Krishna consciousness. So you're dealing with your mind. You have to constantly work against your mind. The mind will always tell you, "Go here, do this, don't do that." Mind, the mind is often on the bodily platform, material platform. So you need to learn how to control the mind, because this mind, it will only control you to do this or to do that. But this is on the physical level, and this is on the material level. So don't be, don't be fully controlled by your mind. You have to use your intelligence, and that intelligence will come from the soul. So don't be fully controlled by your mind. You have to use your intelligence, and that intelligence will come from the soul. So my advice to you is, you have to associate more with the devotees, and you have to hear more, you have to chant more, you have to become more convinced about Krishna consciousness. Okay. Yes. 下一个问题是来自于托拉西·格皮纳特·德维达西。请问，侮辱如果出生是痛苦的，我们为什么还要生孩子？如果不生孩子，就不会受孕、分娩和孩子出生的麻烦和痛苦了吗？ <laughs> yes. Govi Nath Tulasi Tobi Nath ask you if uh, taking birth is painful. Then why should uh, we <laughs> we raise the we want to have a children? If we don't give birth to children, there will be no. Uh, there, there will be no traveling, a series of traveling of to conceive child, to give birth to child, and to raise the child. Yes. Yes, but <clears throat> it's the duty of family life that there should be children. The children will take up the mission of the family, they'll help the family, they give pleasure to the mother and father. For the husband and wife not to have a child, then it's like a desert, that the home is not really the home until the child is there. This is the responsibility of the family. 会给父母带来快乐
，如果夫妻没有妻下无子的话，这个家庭就不像个家庭，就像沙漠一样。And it's a it's a duty of the mother and father to have a child to produce children and to raise them in Krishna consciousness, and they're giving they're giving souls a chance to take birth in a devotee family, and they can raise that soul to be a nice devotee, can be a pure devotee from birth. The future of our Krishna conscious society depends a lot on that our children, that our children should become devotees. We don't know how long we can keep to make new devotees, but if the, our children become devotees, then it makes it much easier to develop the Krishna consciousness movement. 我们不知道，就是，呃，我们我们就在呃培养新奉献者这方面呢，我们在这方面呢，我们还能够培养多少新奉献者？但是如果一个孩子他成，呃、如果我们奉献者他们有自己的孩子的话，那么这个就对于我们昆士纳之间的运动就容易的多了。嗯。This the son is called Putra. If you have a son, he's called Putra. Putra means the one who saves the father from going to hell. So when you have a son, you want a son who has a good quality. The good qualities of the son can help to deliver the father from going to hell. 儿子儿子他的那个范范文呢被称为 Putra. Putra 的意思就是能够把父父辈从地狱当中拯救出来的人，如果这个孩儿子呢有有优秀的品质，他就能把父亲从地狱的境况当中救救出来。So in every endeavor, there's some happiness, there's some distress. There's some distress to give birth, but there's also some pleasure. 每一份努力呢，它都有快乐和痛苦。生孩子是，嗯，的过程是痛苦的，但是孩子他也能给家庭带来欢乐。Bhaktivinoda Thakur had more than ten children. Bhaktivinoda Thakur 他生育了十十多个孩子。And Prabhupada had five children. Prabhupada 也有五个孩子。Lord Nityananda had children. Advaita Acharya had children. Advaita Acharya also had children. Okay, the next question. The next question is... Shruti Rupa Devadasi. 顶拜咕噜，另一个问题也是帮助正在聆听《博家放歌》的老人提问的。在聆听了一段时间的《博家放歌》之后，我已经不再对死亡那么恐惧了，甚至趁着现在健康的时候，就已经开始和儿女交代后事，准备墓地了，也在心里悄悄念诵圣名，但是就没有，就是没有信心成为奉献者，更不敢想死后去灵性世界。请问，请问咕噜，像我这么愚昧的灵魂，如果只是按照现在的情况，听听佛家放歌，随心所欲的念诵圣名，死亡来临的时候，会发生什么情况呢？顶拜咕噜。<笑>
Yeah. Yeah. A blessing to God. Um, this question is also uh, to help another old people who is listening to Bhagavad Gita. These old people ask that after listening the Bhagavad Gita for some times, I no longer have so much fear for death. Even now, I'm still healthy. This whole people is still healthy. He or she began to arrange those matters after death to entrust those family affairs to the children and prepare cremetery tomb and in my, in the heart uh, these old people is also oh, is chanting the holy names secretly but uh, still um, he or she hasn't the face to become a devotee and and what uh, to mention to think about going to spiritual world after death so she wants she will he want to ask a guru um, as an ignorant soul like myself if i only listen to bhagavad gita and chant the holy name um, as i want whimsically so after so when the death come what will happen well, according to her spiritual advancement in this life, she'll take a birth so that she can continue her progress. Yeah, she, she'll have the opportunity to associate with devotees in the future and she can again can try to continue from how far she's made off. Prabhupada explains, if you have 1% spiritual advancement in this life, you continue from that 1%. It's there in the next life. Whatever progress she's made, she will not lose that progress. She'll continue from that point in her next life. In this sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, chapter six, Lord Krishna describes that if one is practiced for even just for a short time, then at the, after they die they will go to the higher planets and they will enjoy they will enjoy in the heavenly planets, they will enjoy sense gratification, they'll satisfy all their material desires, and then they'll come back to this planet and they'll take birth in a wealthy family or a aristocratic family and they'll have the opportunity to again progress in Krishna consciousness. Uh, but then Krishna also describes if one's practiced for a longer time but still has some material desire, not yet fully pure, then that person would take birth in a family of devotees and he would become the fa in the child, a child in a family of devotees and from the beginning of life he'll have the opportunity for spiritual practice. Krishna, 
呃，他在他离开身体之后，嗯、呃，他还有物质欲望没有满足，还没有纯粹，那么他会投身。在奉献者的家庭当中，一开始就有机会在 Krishna 的直觉当中取得进步了。So the children born to devotee couples are not ordinary souls, but they're special souls that in their previous life they were already advanced yogis, but not yet fully perfect. 在奉献者家庭当中出生的孩子。So Prabhupada taught devotee couples who have children to be very careful when they de deliver a child that these child these children are all special souls. And you should give them every opportunity to cultivate their Krishna consciousness. So, especially, of course, it's important at the time of leaving the body. This lady, who's described, you know, if somehow if she's able to hear the chanting of the holy name at the time of leaving the body, it will be very helpful for her spiritual progress. <laughs> 他说他能离开，呃，离开的时候，聆听到圣名将会非常对他的灵性进步非常有帮助。So she wants to try to focus the mind on the chanting of the holy name and to hear chanting and to have association. If she can have association more with devotees, it's also very good for her. And if after she leaves the body, then to do the last rites, to offer prayers, get the blessings of devotees, it's very powerful. Hmm. Okay, how you went, Tima? Well, devotees should all give you love and support. Of course, the Diksha Guru will give you love and support. And the, the devotees whose instructions you're carrying out, they should also give you love and support. Devotees have loving relationships.
it's very good. You're you're doing what A says and you're doing what B says. You follow instructions. Yeah, it's good not to act independently, to take instructions from others and do our best to serve. That mood of cooperation is very good. And because you're following their instructions, then these people they should get they should also give you love and support. And your gurus, your diksha guru, shiksha gurus, they will also give you love and support. That's the purpose of a spiritual master, to give love and support to the people under his shelter. No, just a name, Madan Gopal, it's the name of Krishna. Krishna has many names. It's one Krishna, just as many names. There's Madan Mohan as well. Madan Mohan is another name of Krishna. Mm -hmm. The de the name which was used here was Madan Gopal. The, the name of a name of Krishna, a name of a deity. You know, at the time of installing the deity of Krishna, the spiritual master who's doing the installation will give a name for the deity. Just like we have here in Mayapur, we have Radha Madhava, and in Vrindavan we have Radha Shamsundar, and in Bombay you have Radha, uh, what is it, in Juhu? Uh, in, in Chaupati you have Radha Gopinath, and uh, in different places, different names of deities. But it's all Krishna, just names of Krishna. spiritual master is inspired to name the particular deity and he will from his heart he will offer a name which he considers suitable for us to address the deity by Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, my daddy is often obeisance to you. 
and she said that in her heart, she always wants to search a living example to enlighten her heart. Is it that she should prepare herself uh, so that after surrendering, she can meet one such example. Yes, very nice. You can make yourself, you can be an example. Is that what she means? She, she will be the example? So she, she wants to have an example uh, to her living devotee who is very Inspiring, give her a lot of inspiring yes. inspiration. Yes, you should find that person who inspires you, who can be an example for you. She that, should. that is the purpose of initiation. You take initiation from a person who can inspire you. You have to be convinced that this personality can save you from material life, that he's the proper person to guide you out of the material world. So you, you have to hear this person. It's not that you just look at him and think, oh, this is the person who inspires me. You have to hear. You have to take instructions and be guided by him. Then you can be convinced. And Prabhupada recommends you should hear for a year before you decide who is the right person. Yes, Shaiga Wanti. The question is that the latter part is that uh, is it that she needs to prepare herself or only after surrendering that she can meet such a person? Well, you have to. You, you may be the person even before you surrendered. You may, you may be inspired to surrender after meeting the person. And you may surrender, sometimes you may surrender first and then you meet the person who is inspiring you. It can be, it's not, it may be different, different ways. You don't know Krishna's plan. Some people may meet the person who inspires them very early and may inspire them to surrender. And other people, they surrender first, and then they, after a lot of searching, they find a person who inspires them. Mm. Uh, uh, I bow down to Guru. Just now 
how you mentioned uh, Srila Prabhupada and also members from Panchatattva, they also have children. Since they are all come, they are they, they are souls coming from spiritual world. Uh, is that their children and progeny are born devotee, or is that their children were also affected by the material, the mood of a material nature, three mode of a, a material nature like ordinary people? and become materialists. Well, remember, I, I said those who are not perfect in Krishna consciousness, they, were not, they practice yoga for some time and they may take birth in a devotee family. So it wasn't that they were all coming from the spiritual world. They were coming from the material world and they were not perfect, but they practiced yoga in their previous life. Just like Advaita Acharya, he had six sons. Advaita Acharya had six sons and three of them were devotees and three were not devotees. The other three were impersonalists. So the, the impersonalists, you know, they followed a different path from their father. They didn't, they didn't properly understand their father. So, birth in a, in a family of a great soul, it's an advantage, but not every child takes advantage. They may have the nice birth, the good birth, and the opportunity to become devotees, but somehow, by association with non-devotees and materialistic world, they, they don't take advantage. They, they have to think of, you know, taking birthdays, they, they still have their life, they have to arrange for their material life, they have to get married, they have family, then they have to think about supporting, taking care of the family. So a lot of material issues are there and it can distract even a great soul. But certainly it's a it's a good birth, it's an opportunity. The soul may not take advantage, but the opportunity was there. Okay, 
吃亏吗？还是应该伸张正义，去据理力争，挫败他们的傲气，保护自身利益？如何与这样的人交往相处？ So this devotee called Honey 108, she she or he pay obeisance to Guru. She met something not very fair and just, and some people had done something that is not according to Dharma, and their character is very. Uh, troublesome and taking advantage of others and will exploit others. So in front of such people should we tolerate and uh, to admit that uh, we have to accept those unfair treatment or should we stick to the justice and to argue with them and to defeat their pride, to defend our benefits. So how can I deal with such people? Well, Sometimes it's, it's better just to accept it and just uh, think this, this is your karma, that maybe you wronged this person in the past and so they're, now they're giving you trouble. That maybe in the previous life or some other time you had done something wrong to them and now it's coming back to you that they're giving you trouble. But if you try to do something against them and you get revenge in them, then they become your enemy and then they want to get back to you and give you more trouble. Just like there's a common saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So if we work on that principle, then the result is that in the, the final result will be no one has any eyes and nobody has any teeth. So if you're always thinking to get back to people who do wrong to you, it makes an unpleasant world. So sometimes it's good to just be tolerant. Lord Chaitanya teaches us tolerance. He said we should be tolerant like the tree. The tree stands and anybody can come and take the branches and take the fruit, take the flowers, they can cut the tree. The tree tolerates. We should be tolerant. If you can, if you can tolerate it, it's very good. Okay. 
OK， 下一个问题。下一个问题，西梅，母亲和小孩子连接呢，通过不杀的吗？嗯，呃 ，devotee called 西梅 ，how to she ask how to connect with the children? Is that、uh, through prasadam? Well, prasadam is very very important. You want you must have nice prasadam for the children. Prabhupada would give biscuits or sweets to the children. We would all come to the Vyasa San, and Prabhupada would give biscuits out or sweets to the children. Children would be very happy to come and take prasadam from Prabhupada. Prasadam is very, very important. It is to give the children some good food. Prabhupada, he made this bowl. He would sit in his Vyasa San and give them some sweets. He would sit in his Vyasa San and give them some sweets. 就给那些小孩子们，一个一个小孩子们就会从他手里接受他亲手递过来的饼干呐、啊，这甜点。But it's also very nice to tell the children pastimes of Lord Krishna and to teach them to chant. 与此同时呢，给这些小孩子们，呃，讲 Krishna 消时光，教他们怎么念诵，这样做也是非常有。Mm, children often lead the kirtan in temples. We have young children leading the kirtan, and even some children they give class and they do dramas. Hmm. Hmm. So you have to keep the children amused. You have to find different ways to engage them. Take some good talent to know how to keep children happy. So you, so you need to make children happy, make them enjoy themselves. You need to make them have activity. Um, so uh. 需要绞尽脑汁的让孩子怎么快活？嗯，下一个问题。下一个，清月马达吉，哈利·克里斯纳，请问怕不怕得的孩子们，他们成为伊斯康的奉献者了吗 ？Well, some of them did, yeah. 是的，有一些就成为奉献者了。There was one. Prabhu, Prabhu, Prabhupada's son. He lives. He lives in Calcutta. The youngest son, and he, his, his daughter became a devotee, and she married a devotee, and she was living here in Mayapur. Um, Prabhupada, he Yeah, but what happened? That the, the granddaughter who was living here, you know, she married the devotee and she was initiated, but you know, there there was a flood, and she died in the flood. Yeah, Prabhupada's granddaughter died in the flood here in Mayapur. Oh, Prabhupada's granddaughter, he later also died. But later, one time, he was in the flood. He was in the flood and left the body. But her, her child is still here. She has a child living here. 可以继续回答，嗯。
。Good morning. Yeah. 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 我作为现现在的我们怎么理解呢 ？Yeah. Obviously, to guru and all teachers, do the bhajra and do the are evil, are evil both in their mind and their deeds. Yet Krishna is so merciful that he allowed them to return back to Godhead. How can we understand that? Well, you you have to understand that these people are not ordinary souls; that they have come to take part in Krishna's pastimes. And some people they come take part as demons in Krishna's pastimes. Um, you And Dhritarashtra, he did great austerities at the end of life. He went to the forest. He renounced everything, and he gave up his body in the forest. So he got some perfection. He got some impersonal liberation. He didn't go back to Godhead, but he got impersonal liberation. Duryodhan, Duryodhan, he died a painful death. He was beaten by the club of Bhima and broke his spine, and so he died a painful death. That that took away a lot of a lot of his karma. He was actually, you know, a good person. In some ways, he was good. He when he was ruling, when and when the Pandavas were in exile, Duryodhan was ruling, and he was quite a good ruler. But Krishna didn't want didn't want Duryodhan to rule. Krishna wanted the Pandavas to rule, so Krishna arranged the Kurukshetra war. And, Duryodhan died in the, with the war. Also, not an ordinary person because he got so much contact with Lord Krishna, and certainly he got some benefit from that, being there and being with Krishna. Although not surrendering to Krishna and not recognizing Krishna as the supreme Lord, but still he had the opportunity to to meet Krishna. 所以，故事说他从来没听说过独孤岛回归了神手。I'm not sure exactly who his identity is. He was some kind of, uh, some kind of dem, some kind of.、Uh, he has some kind of big position, though. He has a big position in the material world. Not at all an ordinary person. 
You can understand, to take part in Krishna's pastimes, you have to be a really special soul. And he had a lot of friendship with Lord Balaram. He was very dear to Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram had taught Duryodhan how to fight with the club. Okay. How you went to Iga? We utilize intelligence by discriminating what is good for devotional service and what is not. Intelligence is used to, 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 just, to decide what things we need, should do and what things we shouldn't do. So to cultivate good intelligence, you have to hear scriptures and you have to associate with devotees. You have to get good intelligence, develop good intelligence to know these things. We give the example, the senses are like horses, the mind are like the reins, and the intelligence is the driver. And so you, you need to have a good driver. So the intelligence is seated next to the soul, and from the soul, if we have a good, in, if if we take instruction from the soul, then we will develop the good intelligence. Okay, so we'll stop here today. Ganshi Sati Jujur, Ganshi Guru Mani, Gewa Majantai the Fanhi, Ganshi Sayudu Fangshenza Lingting, Jufuniman, Shanghao Kwaila. Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai. Go back to Vrinda ki. Jai. Haribo.